what we haven't mentioned with this whole system is, what about the politics? Okay? Because if you come in here and say, we're going to raise people's taxes, and you're a politician, what's going to happen to you? I'm not going to get reelected. You're probably going to have a, tr a little trouble getting reelected, particularly if you're a Republican these days. Right? How often do we have elections in this country for, for Congress? Two every, two two, every two years for the House of Representatives and Six one years. third of the Senate. So the furthest ahead a politician can afford to look is about two years, which means he doesn't necessarily take into account the long-term implications of these policies. All right, so far. All right. Last call because I'm going to add a couple of complications now. I'm going to change that consumption function. We'll leave the other numbers where they are. But the new consumption function is going to look something like this. Um, making it up. 110 plus 0.95 Y subscript D. Y D discretion. I'm sorry, <laughs> just went blank. What's a D? Anybody done any reading on this? Uh, oh, uh, um, it's uh, disposable income. Okay, it means after tax income. So now we're also going to plug in how much the taxes are in this economy. Let's make up a number and call it. 22. Now, what we want to remember is that YD is gross income minus taxes. So now when we plug all these numbers back into that equation, look at the small change, okay? Y equals 110 plus 95% of disposable income, which is Y minus the taxes. You see where the change was? Don't plug taxes in down at the end of this equation. I'm running out of space here, but plus 21 plus 19 minus 6. There's your whole aggregate demand equation that you're going to solve through to get your equilibrium. Can you do that? Talk's cheap. Show me the money. Hundred and ten plus ninety five percent of Y minus what's point ninety five times twenty two? Twenty point nine. 20.9. And then the other stuff as usual. And so is everybody comfortable with how we got those two terms there? Right? Jake? Okay, so we do not add now the tax at the end because it's part of uh, the parenthesis within the parenthesis. It's within the parentheses. It's subtracted from your gross income before you start spending money. Everybody comfortable with where 20.9 came from? Are you comfortable with the fact that it's a negative number? Right? Because we're subtracting it from income. Once you make that, you know, the rest of it's the same. What do we get here? 110, Do it the long way here. 154 plus 0.95y minus 20.9. Does that look about right? I'm making this up as I go along. You need to help me out here. 10, 31, 41, 50. Uh, maybe that's 144? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, too, attended public school. What can I say? I left the 20.9 out here because I can't do all that stuff at one time in my limited, you know, memory processor brain. So 144 minus 20.9 would be what? 123.1. Plus 0.95 Y
So we get 0.05y is 123.1. And then we get our equilibrium is 246, no, 2462. Is that right? Yeah. So there's our new equilibrium. Sir? How'd you get 0.5? I subtracted 0.95y from each side. That's a 1.0y minus 0.95. Good. Where did you get 20.9 from one, one more time? I got the 20.9 when I distributed the 0.95 to each of the terms in the parentheses. Oh, sure. right, right, right. Good. Gotcha. Anything else? Considerably lower number than that 3,200 we had in it. Mm -hmm. Because we're taking taxes out of that spending flow. What would be the next thing we'd look for if we were doing this model? Yeah. What's full employment? And based on full employment, what's going on in the economy? And what are the two things that will be going on in the economy with this Keynesian model? Look at this graph. There's, you're going to be in one of two worlds. You're either going to be in an inflationary scenario, or if you calculate the demand curve and it's way down here, then what is this range? What's this range of the supply curve? It's called the Keynesian range. And yes, what you are saying, if you're located in the Keynesian range, you're looking at a recessionary economy. And so when you go to your fiscal policy tools, it's the same calculation, but what? <laughs> what do you need to do to taxes over here? You need to reduce taxes and increase spending, which is the opposite of what you did up here. Okay? So if you work through a couple of three of these models, and remember there's at least one on Angel, all spelled out and written out for you, you should be able to knock this out pretty quick. It's pretty mechanical. So Keynes is all about fiscal policy, spending and taxes, to manage the demand curve, and where is he trying to get the demand curve to go? Uh, to the, perfect to the sharp break, which keeps your inflation, inflation as low as possible and your unemployment as high as possible. That's the simplistic part of Keynesian economics. We'll just throw some numbers in it. Questions, comments, anybody? Oh, my God. Is this because uh, something came up in the news? or Okay. Because you made a mathematical error. Yeah. yeah, I could live with that. I'm familiar with it. <laughs> Anything else? Now, we can make this a lot more complicated, and I'm, I know you're excited about that. Okay? What else would change the level of consumption spending besides your income and your taxes? Instead of gross domestic product, we can use like net investment. Wouldn't that change something? Yeah, but, but we're going to stay with gross. Like, say the value of the inflation will go down because you have more product in the market. Possibly. I think what you're alluding to is there's some way in this model, instead of just moving the demand curve, is there some way to move the supply curve and get businesses to produce more? And if you could, if you could move the supply curve further out, what would that do? If businesses began to produce more, Inflation prices, would go down. prices would fall. What about employment? It would create more jobs. And so the attraction of what we call supply-side economics is that if we can figure out how to make the supply curve move, not the demand curve, it can be beneficial for everybody. More products, more jobs, more incomes, lower prices. And we've chased that somewhat elusive animal at least since Ronald Reagan. And we'll, we'll be going through that on the third exam, the supply side arguments and experiences. Okay? Here's what I'm thinking. One of the other things that will change the, the amount of money you spend is interest rates. When interest rates fall, what happens to spending? People borrow more money. Run up the credit cards, buy cars, buy dishwashers, okay? So, arguably, if we were talking about the whole economy, we would have another term up here, something like this. Minus, I don't know, um, 
15 times the interest rate. And then we could plug in a value for the interest rate. The interest rate is 5%. And then what else changes the, the, the way people spend money? Their expectations. When people are feeling good, they spend. When they're feeling frightened, they don't. And so we could find some variable up here. Let's call it the Consumer Confidence Index multiplied by some number. Okay? We could measure expectations. We could plug in a lot of stuff that would affect these spending flows, and we could wind up with an equation that would cover the entire board. And what we're trying to do is we're looking at past behavior, past spending, and saying what kind of things affected it. And based on those things, what's going to happen in the future? How many of you have some statistics? A few. You remember anything called multiple regression? No? It's where you, you take several variables and ask how do they impact this dependent variable. Remember that? This is multiple regression combined with economic theory, and it's a field of study called econometrics. And if you like that kind of stuff, forecasting what's going to happen in the future, manipulating some numbers, and the math isn't all that bad. There's a huge career field for you out there. If you can learn to use mathematics and statistics to forecast the future, and you're accurate, you well write your own ticket. Okay? Any other comments or questions?